You are listening to the voice of the Invasive Species Department Command East. You are still alive. Survivors, I have fantastic news. The battle against the invaders has taken a turn in our favour, and in this programme I will detail precisely how our saviours at Invasion Species Command East are making this happen. Some of you may recognise my voice from The Dead Files. Consider this, old fans of mine, a continuation of that programme, whose format has been recognised as being especially suited to telling a new branch of riveting stories. But here we won't need to worry about learning lessons to aid in our survival, because the work I will describe to you in these reports will alleviate the danger to you, all of you. There are hundreds of thousands of you still alive, and every day more people come forward to join us. Not a moment too late either. So make yourselves comfortable, and I shall tell you of the stunning developments our leading scientists have brought about, all in service of ending this madness. And as a point of justice, finding who it was that started all this madness. Some say they will have died off already, and justice has been served, but something tells me they are still alive. I'm almost certain of it. It all comes back around in the end. We'll make sure of it. Consider that my promise to you, survivor. Now then, I shall begin with a reading from what was given to me under the name of The Script, all half a page of it. Our producers seem to be rather busy, you know. All the better for me, I say. Here's the official line then. Introducing The Vector Program, a breakthrough in controlling zombie behaviour. The principle behind it is simple, with a fascinating modern twist. To control invasive species, it is often the case that one must bring in an additional new species that will do the work of righting the ecosystem and restoring order. This case ended up being no different. It is only that the bacteria behind this outbreak is so unique, so unlike anything else, so engineered, you could say, that it in turn takes a very special kind of complementary life form to join our side in the struggle against it. Think of them as miniature flies. Yes, a small version of a small thing. You can't see them with the naked eye, but you may be able to taste them. Aeroplankton, that's the new word about the office. What is this aeroplankton? The easiest way to put it is zombie food. Ah, so we've poisoned their food to kill them off. That's what you're wondering, isn't it? I'm afraid it's more complicated than that. Zombies can recover from rather a lot, including death, of course. No, trying to kill them is playing to their strong suit. Instead, we can do something even simpler. Lead them astray. Lead them to places of our choosing and contain them. Better yet, we can study them even further. Because there is certainly more to zombies than meets the eye, and as you might have heard already, there are certain methods by which one can... Pick the proverbial pockets of the pestilence and come away healthier for it. Intrigued? We all certainly are. And it was just that branch of research that developed the aeroplankton method. You'll see it by studying the uncanny ability of zombies to seek out the living using only residues in the air. The ability to produce irresistible artificial residues was gleaned. Zombies rabidly pursue and consume this plankton. It nourishes them, sure, but in their pursuit, they can be led far from the green zones and into the sorts of places ISD Command has prepared for just such an occasion. In this program, we will be covering the drama inside one of these semi-figurative zombie pits, so you'll learn all about it. There is only one catch to this marvellous method. The plankton being closely derived from the bacteria itself, requires a living human host to produce. This, as you will learn, is hardly a catch, but in fact a further advantage. What this means, in simple terms, is that a particular person can be given the ability to be overwhelmingly attractive to zombies, to be bait. That person can bring the zombies to our designated points, and doesn't that sound a whole lot better than having the beasts roam free? As for who these heroic servants of mankind shall be, not to worry, as we have already selected them for you to ensure the best compatibility with the aeroplankton, and sometimes the best potential for something called 
Symbiosis, which I shall explain all about in the future. A rather maddening concept, but mad enough to write mad times, I dare say. So terrifying a concept that one must stick by it, for it is even more frightening to our enemies. Such is our sickly science, and such, more holistically, is the good old invasive species department Command East, our sponsors, hosts, saviours, and even our government, if that is the right word for it. With all that said, our approach will be to log the achievements of the so-called Vectors, the people giving the blessing that shall save us all. The more of them we can successfully establish, the more zombies will be trapped. And we all like the sound of that, which is why getting volunteers for the Vector program has been so brilliantly easy. And I won't waste your time by describing the recruitment process at all. How convenient. The best way to show this program's merit is with an example, so allow me to simply carry on my previous list of deads. After all, you'll see these vectors and our beloved deads are in so many ways one and the same category of modern hero. None shows it better than Dead 18, Vector 1, Laurie Coppola. We return to Louisville, Kentucky, the scene of much woe in days gone by. Louisville was selected to be a containment zone recently. I say recently. It was, I must say, actually so long ago that one could be forgiven for mixing up the dates and thinking it was being worked on before the outbreak even started. And forgiven I was. This is where all the action is happening, although I believe the ISD command staff will be arranging plenty of other arenas for their new sport. Entering this arena now was Lori Coppola, the first vector. What is a vector? Someone who the zombies will move towards, thanks to all that rubbish I was reading off before. This is quite a responsibility, and quite dangerous. Because of that, all vectors shall receive key elements of training before they are inserted into the containment zones to do their duty of spouting out more aeroplankton. This training involves survival, combat, engineering, anything you might need to stay alive as long as possible while under even more brutal siege than all of you listening will have been recently. And the Vector's loss shall be our gain, so rounds of applause are due, I dare say. Well done, Laurie Coppola, a heroic volunteer of one sort or another. She was inserted into Louisville via the river which was a lovely place to start one's trip to the city, as the western waterfront is parapeted with beautiful houses and manicured copses of trees. Inside one of these houses, she suddenly woke up. Yes, our vectors need to be unconscious during insertion, for complicated reasons I needn't explain here, although I fear I shall be forced to shortly. Anyway, yes, Laurie was ready for action. She soon recovered her senses and realised what had happened to her or remembered what she had volunteered for, as I said. And once she was done screaming with excitement and ripping apart the walls of the house looking for microphones in which she could express her gratitude, she decided to look outside. Zombies! It was working already. They were coming for her from miles away. The Vector system works. It really works. <clears throat> Lori was eaten by the zombies immediately. So ends our report. No matter, because the whole point of this program is that we have many subjects to use in order to gain experience and get this right. Dead 19, Vector 2, Alfonso Frank. This time it's the powers that be learning from the demise of deads, and Learn ISD Command East certainly did, for the next Vector who was released, or selected or something I suppose, was inserted into Louisville by helicopter somewhere in the southern suburbs. The concept was that staying away from the Ohio River would avoid the large hordes of zombies that tend to gather there, and improve the all-important day one survivability score of the Vector. Hence Alfonso woke up in one of the hundreds of mass-produced housing units of a neighbourhood that is best described as a large series of driveways and parking lots with places for humans to live too. And I understand the irony of uttering the latter half of that phrase. Now, Alfonso knew what the deal was. He had been thoroughly trained for this situation, like all Vectors. He knew that the reason he woke up beside a baseball bat and a can of beans was because he needed to establish an ISD base for all future Vectors to use. He thought back. What was the procedure? 
gather supplies, acquire a vehicle, select an ideal location for a mix of defensibility during an attack, and proximity to zombie-friendly travel paths to ensure those attacks keep on coming in. He began breathing heavily and working his muscles out as he smashed the house up with the baseball bat in a feral rage for some reason. Yes, Alfonso, work it! You see, the way our vectors produce aeroplankton is very much determined by the level of physical stress the body is under. Stress hormones like cortisol meld into the zombie bacteria, consuming both in order to create the breeding grounds and feed for the aeroplankton in the lungs. From there, they are naturally ejected to begin their good work out in the world. That means mad panic, raving, rampaging, it's all really good business. If Alfonso remembered his training, he would know that. Although we can't be sure the training really sticks because of all the chemicals we have to fill the vectors with to prime them for plankton production. Oh, it's hardly more special than taking paracetamol. We all ingest strange things to better our lives in this modern age. One day, all this vector research might just get us the pill that… the pill that undoes all this. It physically hurts to even think about, so allow me to get on with reporting how Alfonso Frank did on his noble mission to save us all and establish a permanent solution to the Kentucky crisis. Alfonso went to the house next door, was bit in the neck, barely avoided bleeding out, then wandered about the suburb in a daze, trying to keep a horde of zombies away with feeble swings of the baseball bat. He became exhausted, and the blighters got him. And hence we have even more proof that the zombies really love a vector. That's encouraging, eh? Very, very encouraging. <laughs> right. Let's see what's on the next page then. Dead 20, Vector 3, Sophie Marks. Oh dear. This doesn't look good. Well, they want me to report on it, so I'll have to now. I wouldn't be caught dead admitting to this if I wanted to pretend my victims were <clears throat> anything for a paycheck in this troubled economy. Glad to see they have no intention of listening to me at least. Uh, Sophie Marks. I don't know where she came from or how closely she was listening during her Vector program initiation session, but she clearly had a pressing goal to attend to that prevented her from… I don't know how to put this. If they wanted me to sugarcoat it, they should have given me a bag of bloody sugar. Sophie's insertion went as planned, also being placed in a marginally less infected than elsewhere suburb on the southern outskirts of town. She didn't panic or rage when she woke up. I think she was expecting this and had a plan in mind already. She didn't procure supplies or a vehicle or do much of anything she was supposed to. No, she took her free baseball bat without even a speck of gratitude and beat her way out of the insertion house before too many zombies came over to investigate the hubbub of a helicopter landing and taking off. This allowed her to outlast and outperform the previous vectors by literal leaps and bounds by which I mean she leapt and bounded over some fences to reach a railway corridor running right through this suburb. A corridor that might lead her right out of the city, yes. She got marching, not in the direction she was supposed to. The zombies pursued her. That was supposed to happen at least. She didn't look back, stomping along the sleepers until she reached the first containment ring. Yes, the containment rings. We do tell the Vectors about this, but Sophie had to see it to believe it. Rings of metal fences topped with razor wire, covering the entire landward side of Louisville. There is no escape, as the sages of our time quip ad nauseum. That said, I am to report to you how Sophie rebelled against such a notion. Her surname was Marks, after all. She moved along the fence line, through some woods, coming next to the little refugee camp that people made on the first night of the infection. Those people were still there, sporting all the bullet wounds they had received when the authorities began quarantining. Hardly stopped them coming after Sophie now. The crowd at her back was growing truly large, and she rightly didn't give them a second look. More panic means more plankton, means more pursuers. Sophie knew how this game was played alright. She knew too much, actually. The fence soon led her to the highway into the city, where she could move through the military vehicle checkpoint to escape the first containment ring. Allow me to introduce you to the second containment ring. This one was sealed completely shut and was built more thoroughly than the first. 
There was only one weakness to this next defensive line, and it was one that only Sophie could exploit. You see, while Louisville is a containment zone, it is still fair to say that most zombies in the county are contained outside it. Therefore, the Vector program has the side effect of causing large buildups of zombies on the exterior edges of the zone. These zombies, seeing Sophie sizing up the second vehicle checkpoint on the highway, were very, very hungry. With ravenous energy, they pushed and pushed so forcefully that zombies at the front were mashed through the thick wires of the fencing, like meat through a mincer. Lovely. They'd be back together soon enough, don't you worry. Or do. Sophie got a literal lucky break when the thinner fence over the road broke down under the weight of the horde. How about that? Perhaps there is escape after all. There was always suspicion that vectors would flee their post, but not so quickly and so effectively. Well done, Sophie, then. Well done. Once the wall of monsters fanned out beyond the breach, Sophie could push through them and traverse the second containment ring. Ah, it's the third containment ring. This was easier to escape, with its road checkpoint blocked not by a fence, but by a bulldozed wall of scrap metal. All the cars the military had cleared off the roads, I believe. Resourceful, yet ineffective, as Sophie climbed nimbly over them. The zombies had trouble, but the stronger ones managed to pull themselves after their target. Ah, the stronger ones. More and more of those. I think that's going to get... We're off topic. Sophie had escaped the city. She was a vector into the unknown, drawing the horde to wherever, and supposedly still in possession of whatever combination of rebellious spirit and grudge it took to forsake her sacred duty. You volunteered for this, Sophie, remember? You don't remember? Oh, I'm sure it simply slipped your mind because of all the chemicals. Yes, the chemicals. You probably forgot the chemicals, too. It's hard being a vector. Very hard. You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy, let alone innocent prisoners. I mean, survivors. I mean, nothing really. It says here Sophie strayed beyond the established surveillance zone, and so we don't know what happens to her. Obviously, she is already primed to be a vector, so the zombies won't leave her alone. In fact, since there isn't some big migration of zombies going on right now, other than into Louisville, she is either still in said area, or, I don't know, dead? Can a vector even die after all they've been tinkered with? Hard to find someone who can genuinely die these days, and it's not for want of looking, or wishing. Thank you, Sophie, for your work. The fence shall be reinforced, training intensified, and discipline shall be established, one way or another. That is the promise of this Vector program, which will save us all. It really will. I know it doesn't. We'll prove it next time. We'll prove it. That's what I'm here to do, I think. It's about hope. It's about something new. Hold on, everyone. We'll build... It says, we'll build a better world on all these pages. Better than this? Ah, such lofty ambitions. Carry on. We carry on. Bloody hell, you can hear them knocking on the walls out there. Guards saving their bullets again. We need another vector. We need this to not be complete and utter bullshit. Please.